Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look and see what radiation makes us all the way down to the troposphere. And it turns out that much of the visible light and a lot of the infrared radiation that comes from the sun makes it all the way down to the troposphere and including UVA, the lower energy UV radiation that makes it past the ozone layer. Now, much of that radiation is actually absorbed by the upper portion of the troposphere and never actually reaches the surface of the Earth down here. And what absorbs that type of radiation? Well, some of it is absorbed by the cloud tops, and most of it, especially in the infrared radiation zone, is absorbed by water vapor and a little bit by carbon dioxide. A total of 23% of the total energy that the Earth receives from the Sun is absorbed in the upper portion of the troposphere. Now when we take a look over here and we take a look at the Sun's black body radiation curve, we can see that we get some UV radiation, much of that is absorbed in the upper atmosphere and in the stratosphere, in the ozone layer. Visible light almost completely makes it through the, uh, through the atmosphere down to the surface of the ground. And then you can see that much of the infrared radiation is, absor obs is absorbed at various frequencies by the water vapor in the top, in the, in the troposphere, and including a little bit absorbed by the carbon dioxide as well. Now, 23% is a lot of energy. A lot more energy that is being absorbed from the Earth going back into, into the troposphere. And so you wonder if that radiation, we'll talk more about that in the next video, if that radiation has such a profound effect in heating the atmosphere, why doesn't the energy from the sun that's absorbed in the upper atmosphere have a similar effect or maybe even a greater effect? And the reason for it having such a small effect on the heating of the atmosphere related to what it's like for us here living close to the surface of the Earth, the reason for that is that all this energy that's being absorbed is immediately re-emitted. So the energy absorbed is continuously re-emitted, absorbed, re-emitted, absorbed between all the various molecules like water, uh, water vapor and carbon dioxide. And more radiation is being sent back into space than towards the, towards the Earth's surface or towards the other molecules next to it. So that eventually the heat that's absorbed is being then transferred back into the stratosphere and out into space. And so not very much of this absorbed energy actually makes us to the surface of the Earth. The vast majority simply gets re-radiated eventually back into space and it doesn't play a big role in heating the lower troposphere. That is, the lower troposphere is heated by the radiation that we get back from the surface of the Earth. So even though so much of the energy is absorbed there, it really does not have much of an effect on the heating properties. And this is clearly visible in the temperature gradient in the troposphere. Notice that if this had a profound effect, that would cause this part of the troposphere to be heated much more, and the temperatures would be much greater at this, at this height but because it doesn't stay and gets re-radiated back into space, it doesn't have a lot of effect on the temperature here, and that's why it's not any warmer at the top of the troposphere. For example, we can see that the, the uh, energy absorption by the ozone layer in the stratosphere has this profound effect, heating it up to almost zero degrees centigrade, and not the same thing is happening here at the top of the troposphere. So that's not a major contributor the major contributor is coming in the next video when we see the energy being sent back into space from the surface of the Earth. And that's the key to the warming of the lower troposphere.